Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Christina coming to you from the Catio. And today our convo is talking about triggers after leaving the narcissistic abusive relationship. Quite honestly, uh, I didn't know what was going to trigger me to have anxiety or a panic attack, um, usually until it already occurred. And that's when I was able to pinpoint what my triggers actually um, are, and I'm sure there's so many that I haven't even discovered as of yet. Uh, for me, watching movies, uh, seeing, uh, seeing a movie we watched together, or hearing a song that reminded me of my ex-narcissist abuser, uh, those were small things, but it really makes an impact when you hear a song on the radio and you're, you're driving in your car. That's not the most ideal time to have a panic attack. And in case in point, if you do, make sure to pull over, call somebody. You do not want to be driving um, while having anxiety or panic attack because you're not only putting yourself in jeopardy, but also other people on the road. But something as simple as that, you don't know how your body is going to react because again, your nervous system is still trying to heal um, from the post abuse and trauma. Uh, another thing that I realized I had to do was when I did get my sentimental items out, I put all those pictures of him away. Uh, I am not strong enough right now to look at them. And it was devastating to even just take glances at them. And that's why also going no contact on social media is so important because you don't want them popping up on your newsfeed. You don't need to see pictures of them and the new supply uh, parading all around town, having a wonderful time, because that's always what it's gonna look like. They're always gonna be out with the new supply, showing everybody, oh, look at how great my life is now. This person makes me so happy. I'm in so much, I'm in love with them. But you know, when they were with you, they didn't even post a picture. You went to their page and it was like they were single, even when you were together. At least my narcissist did that and we were together 18 years and you could go to his page and there was nothing it's like I didn't exist and to him I didn't because again the narcissist to them we all don't matter we're just there for supply and um, whatever they can drain from us so yes you definitely want to get rid of the pictures put them in a drawer don't look at them. I'm sure one day I'll even have the strength that I'll be able to look at them and not have an adverse reaction. But for now, I know that that's something I just cannot do. I, I mentally and emotionally can't handle it right now. Um, I will tell you a scenario that was very surprising, but on Google Photos, there was a video of one of my cats that popped up. And I was like, oh, I hit play. And it was just the cat, but in the background, I heard his voice and it was the first time I heard his voice in like four months and immediately I started crying and it took me right back to that feeling of, you know, being under the narcissist control, being in the trauma bond. So also if you have any audio recordings, voicemails, get rid of them. You don't need them. Who cares if you ever hear their voice again? You uh, Hopefully you don't have to. I hope I never have to ever hear or see him again in my life. And that brings me to um, another trigger that I realized after the discard. My big fear, and it was actually timing was perfect because I was talking to my therapist about the possibility and potential of running into him because we do live in such a small town in a rural community. And uh, she said, make a plan have the plan in plan in your mind what to do if you were to run into him so i really thought about like how i would handle the situation and i've mapped it out you know if he shows up here at the house as the police already told him he will be arrested and i will call the police again if he ever comes back on my property to my front door i mean it's bad enough that i see him you know riding his bicycle up and down the side street but that's why i have cameras so that way if he ever does try to come back to my home I have more proof about how he's been basically stalking. Um, so I definitely uh, would recommend noting, documenting everything, coming up with a plan if they do show up at your home or at your place of business. I made sure to notify my HR department that 
this person should not be here. If they come in looking for me, you know, I'm not here. I do not want to see him. I want nothing to do with him because again, I'm in fear for my safety and also the safety of my coworkers as well because I don't know what he's capable of. Um, so that was my plan for the work uh, situation if he was to show up there, which as of now he hasn't, thank goodness. Uh, my big fear is like grocery stores, which actually happened. It was, the, it was the day after I talked to my therapist and my course of action, I executed perfectly. I was checking out. I seen him from afar. He did not see me. I got my items. I was already in the process of checking out. I immediately, you know, left as quick as I could, got in my car, left. Because you don't want to be there. You don't want to engage the narcissist in conversation. And um, another scenario I had to play out in my mind is if he becomes uh, in a rage or violent in a public place, which, you know, that kind of goes against their ego and their self-image but I don't put anything past him because he has um, acted in violence in public before. As I've said in other videos, he has uh, pulled a gun on a gentleman in public who was just parked, uh, I guess in a no parking zone or what he would call a no parking zone um, that blocked his booth at a show. So if he's willing to do that, I don't know what he's willing to do to me. So if you do see that narcissist out in public, come up with a game plan. And if they do become violent, start drawing attention, start yelling, talking loud, call for help. And if you have to, and when you, if that situation ever arises where you are face to face with them and there is no uh, way to be cordial, you need at that point, at least my plan. And again, this is for me. I am going to let him know that I know what you are. And I think that's important because for me now to be able to identify and say, I know what you are, you narcissist abuser, get away from me. I want nothing to do with you. You're scum. To me, that's really in my heart of what I would love to say to him. But hopefully I never have to see him to uh, deal with that. And even when I did see him from afar, um, the next, I'd say five days, I had panic and anxiety attacks daily and it was a it was a lot and I didn't think that that was going to happen but um, it actually you know it, it actually did I just didn't realize that it was gonna be so severe so many months uh, that have already passed and uh, another thing I think that's so important is once you learn what your triggers are if it's that song if it's a movie you need to begin to associate it with something and bring happiness and joy back. Because how dare they take away a song, good music, a good movie, something you enjoy. You need to find a way to remap your thought process on what that song, what that movie means. Really maybe pay attention to the lyrics. For me, it was bringing you back to a time. And music has that power to transport you. You could feel like you... You know, if you hear a song, oh, I heard that in middle school, you know, it, it'll take you back there. You remember how it felt. So any songs or movies that you might have heard or danced to or seen with the narcissist, you need to start to associate them with different things because don't let them take away a good movie or a good song from you. Don't not listen to it. It's important to take back what they've taken from us. And they, if they're if because of their abuse and the trauma they've caused you is creating you to have this response to a song, to a movie, obviously they've taken already who you were. They've now gave you trauma. They've given you anxiety and panic attacks in return for everything you did and, and gave to them. They gave you nothing in return. So don't let them take one more thing. So I would also recommend when you do feel like you've been triggered, and that you might be spiraling down to that panic and anxiety mode, I would recommend at that point you need to do something, do some self-care. Whether that's you need to practice your breathing and your meditation. Uh, if you can do something that you enjoy to do, like go for a walk, gardening, you know, listening to happy music, that's going to shift your focus 
away from the narcissist abuser. So anyway, guys, that's it for me today. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the triggers. And like I said, I don't know if, um, if I will ever know all of them. I'm sure I'm going to discover even new ones as I go through the process and continue to heal. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share. That way more content like this can be pushed out into the community so other people might be aware of what they are dealing with and might not have to uh, wait as long as I did to be discarded and maybe they can get out a little sooner. So until next time, guys, take care. Bye.